So what the hell is Sculptress Pro exactly? Well, let's find out. So, if we're going to get to the bottom of Sculptress Pro, the new feature added to ZBrush 2018, let's just dive right in. So I'm going to load up ZBrush here, and we're going to start right from the beginning like we always do. All right, so we come up, we close Lightbox, and there he is. This apparently is Sculptress Pro. Let's get the ball rolling, shall we? I'm going to grab a piece of geometry, something noticeable, like this cube. We're going to drag it out. And mother fuck. Let's start again, shall we? So we're gonna grab this cube and we're gonna drag it out and we're gonna hit edit. And now we got a cube. So here's the first thing I wanna show you about Sculptress Pro. It's right here in the toolbar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click it on, we're gonna click it off. Doesn't really do anything like that. So now that we know where it is, we can, uh, I'll just, uh, you know, look at my interface and then I'll change it right here to the one that I like, but, oh, wait a minute, huh, well, it's gone. No, no problem, we can just go back, right? Hmm, wait a minute, no, 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 close, but no, 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 what the f- it disappears if I toggle my next user interface layout. You didn't create a default user interface layout that the program starts up as, as a template you can cycle through. So now, in order to get that button back, I've got to restart ZBrush. You are killing me. All right, here we go again. Close Lightbox, come to here, go to Cube, create a cube, hit Edit, don't change your user layout because they don't want you to. Now we can move this guy around. And we can mess with Sculptress Pro. Now, I was being a little bit hyperbolic before, of course. You can turn it off right here, but also it tells you straight up that the backdash will turn it on and off right here. So it's just this backdash right here on the keyboard. Can't miss it. Turns it on and off. Somebody needs to save them from themselves. So now we have it on, and you'll notice that when you have it on, your little cursor goes from red to, I guess, purple? I don't know. I may be colorblind. Who knows? And what that means is that this brush will now dynamically add and subtract polygons. So let's go to polyframe mode, and you can see what this looks like. And second off, why, why, is the, why are cubes made? Why did you pinch the polys on the top of the cube? Like... God damn. Stay focused, focused. So what you're gonna see here is you've got this hard edge, right? And say you wanna smooth it. Well, if I have this turned off and I hold down shift to smooth it and I try to smooth it, it's gonna give me an error. It needs to be a poly mesh 3D. No problem, we come over to here, poly mesh 3D, hit that guy, gave it a color. So now that we got poly frame on and off, we can smooth this edge. So if I hold shift and I smooth this edge, you'll see what it does. Nothing terribly impressive. It's just taking the polygons as they are and smoothing them out. So let's undo that. Turn Sculptures Pro on. Hold Shift. And drag over this guy. Oh man, now it's getting crazy. So what you can see here is that it dynamically added a ton of polygons to round this edge off as best as it could. And you can actually come down through here and drag this over the whole thing and just keep going like this. And you can smooth out this entire object this way. Now, there's pros and cons to this. Clearly, you can see that these polygons are all triangles, some quads, but mostly all triangles as it tries to dynamically tessellate this stuff, uh, giving you the amount of geo that you would need to actually kind of do whatever the hell you want. See right here, all these triangles, they didn't matter, right? You can just smooth right over the top of them and call it a day. Now, if we can turn polyframe, well, let's leave polyframe on now because this is important. The smaller you make your brush, the more geo it's going to add when you make a stroke. So if I increase this up like this big and make a stroke, didn't do a whole lot. But if I shrink this guy down real small and make a stroke, you'll see that it's adding tons of polygons. Like, look at that, just tons and tons and tons of polygons. 
because it's dynamically adding detail wherever I'm making a stroke. Say I want to get rid of all this stuff, large and make your brush big again, hold down shift, and shift will subtract polygons. So make the brush small, make a stroke, lots of polygons, make it big again, hold shift, subtract those polygons. If I even go bigger than this, and hold shift, it will really subtract polygons and make your object much simpler. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's this whole thing in a nutshell. It, uh, it's really cool, truthfully. Now, this was in their program that nobody cares about, Sculptress, and instead, <laughs> instead of their flagship modeler, ZBrush, because, you know, reasons. But, I mean, the cool thing about this is you can kind of do whatever you want. You can get all these brushes and kind of have fun, like, go into damn standard, come into here, and, like, make these high polygon-like cuts. And again, you want to take a look at what it's doing. It's just doing whatever. This is really neat when you want to rapid prototype stuff. It doesn't really care about flow or anything like that because you're going to be seeing it like this, right? So, of course, if you were to turn this guy off and start to work on this, you'll notice that the polygons are all kind of like messed up in triangles. So what you're going to end up having to do is let me you see if you try to smooth this out, it creates all kinds of pinches and crazy things. Now, here's something that they're not going to tell you about this program. You can smooth it out. You can get rid of these pinches and everything. But let me show you something that you really got to worry about with this guy. And it's not the obvious thing, which is your polyflow is going to be messed up and everything's crazy. The first problem I'm going to show you with this is what it does when you have a hole in your mesh. So let's go to their dog. As we change, we'd like to know. Here's the dog, right? So I'm going to zoom into this guy's face and bring this down a little bit and say I want to add a whole bunch of polygons here and hold shift to smooth out these guys, create a few, create a few, yep, it's totally working, and then we're gonna, oh shit, now we got a problem. Woof. So, what happened here is that on his mouth, he's got a gap into nothingness. So anywhere you have a gap like that, it's gonna completely erode your polygons, and woof. The, the control Z is the only fix. So if you're smooth in here, and you're smooth in here, and you're smooth in here, but if you go here, you're screwed. Sculptors Pro. Really neat. Now, that's the first problem. And the second problem is this. Let me load in a model that I've been working on. And I'll show you one of the, one of the limitations you're going to run into with this guy. So here's a character I've been messing with for a little bit. Just some concept sculpting. So here I have the character's head. Totally fine. We can just hide everything else. What you're going to see here is this character's head is about 5 million polygons, right? So I'm going to come into here. I'm going to have Sculptress Pro on. Select this guy and come into here. And since I'm at about 5 million polygons, I'm going to make a stroke. And there's my error. This mesh composed, <laughs> this mesh composed of too many, shouldn't it say this mesh is composed of too many polygons. That's like really bad. Pixel logic. Got it. Use preferences memory max sculptress polygons to set the maximum allowed polygons for sculptress mode. Sculptress mode disabled. So now it just turned it off because it's like you got too many polygons and I'm at 5 million polygons, which sounds like a lot, but you know, you're not going to get hyper detail with 5 million polygons. Like, I can't go into the pores, I can't add any more stuff, like, so of course you go to preferences, you go to mem, because, I mean, while they can put performance here, they can't put memory. <sighs> Pixel logic. <laughs> and you can kind of come into here and tell it how many you want. Now, I have it at five, I guess five equals five million, sure. If I try to go higher or lower like this, I can go to 10 million and then turn it back on and then make a brush. And what you're going to see here is it will do it, but see how delayed it is? It's super delayed. Now, that's not really an ideal way to sculpt. I had my preferences at five because that just felt right. Now, you can push your system around and see what works. And you can see here that even that it's just this really bad latency. 
And this is going to be, you know, the test of your machine. If you've got a really, really good machine, you know, I've got a pretty good machine. I've got 32 gigs of RAM and dual 1080 Founders Editions. And like, you know, I've got all the bells and whistles and I can only manage to properly work without any latency like this at about 5 million polygons. Now, does that mean your computer can do 5 million polygons? I don't know. I haven't really tested it, truthfully. But I'd imagine that limit is sort of inherent in whatever box you're on. So if your computer isn't very powerful, expect to maybe get more latency at the 5 million range. If it is more powerful, maybe you can comfortably sculpt at 5 million. Five it is, right? It may be even defaulted to less than that. I can't remember. I've had this copy of ZBrush for a little while. Those are the two problems. If you have holes in your mesh, your shit's gonna just disintegrate. If you're sculpting on an object that's over 5 million polygons, then yeah, you're gonna have to find a way to reduce them. So I'll show you the best way to reduce them right now. So this head is at 5 million polygons, and if I go to polyframe, you can see I've been sculpting the hell out of this guy. So he has a lot of, he's got a lot of like, worthless polygons that are just floating around in these crevices because as you sculpt you're just adding and subtracting and kind of doing whatever and not really thinking about the maximum number of polygons so it's super inefficient super super inefficient so we can totally fix this all you have to do is take the head duplicate the head now we've got our dupe and classic z remesher situation you come down into here go to z remesher we're gonna make this like 15 sure uh, we're smooth groups, blah, blah, blah. We don't have any of this set up, so blah, 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 blah. We're just going to put it at 15, hit Z remesher and see what happens. All right, well, it failed. Awesome. Let's change it to 10, turn this off, and hit Z remesher again. And this time, we'll cross our fingers. Cool, so that was the secret. What I ended up having to do was turn off polygroups because I had a bunch of polygroups on this thing. So if you see here, I can turn my high detail head off. Come to here, there's my high detail head. Here's my low detail head, which is, of course the polyflow is not fine. You should take it to an external package or inside ZBrush either way and lay down a good low poly workflow. But what you can do now is you can turn the high detail head on, give this guy a couple of subdivisions and we're gonna go one, two, sure. And of course, you know, take a look at them. So there we go, low detail, high detail, low, high. So of course, this is the simplest thing in the world. You're gonna turn this guy on, you're gonna turn this guy on, and then we're going to go to project, turn the blur to zero, always, and then we're just gonna project all, and bam, there we go. So now, what we've done is we've kind of reset our head. So our, if we'll notice right here, our high detail is 5 million polygons. Our next detail that we just created is 500,000 polygons. And if you look at them side by side, 500,000, 5 million, 500,000, 5 million. Now, of course, a lot of these creases are messed up. So you're gonna have to get in there and fix them. But at this point, you can get in there, fix them, and continue to sculpt unabated. So when you're looking at stuff like this, you get the gist of it, right? Like you can continue to work and it won't really affect you that much. You are gonna sacrifice detail when you do this. So maybe it might even behoove you to go to geometry and then divide this guy to another one and then turn this, not that one, this one back on and then project again and see if it can pick up any of that detail. Cool, totally worked. So now we're gonna turn that off. And here is our next head. Now this head right here is at two million polygons, five million, two million, five million, two million, right? So now I got three more million polygons to work with on this guy before I hit the same roadblock I was on with this head. And from this far away, these are the two heads. There is no distinguishable difference other than a little bit of lining on the inside right here, which is totally fixable, especially if I actually set up proper polyflow on this guy. Like, I, this is just me eyeballing shit. So that's something you gotta kinda think about, right? The cool thing about Sculptress Pro is now I can take this crazy high poly, five million polygon head, delete that guy, go to this head, turn on Sculptress Pro, and start to go again. Bam, uh, multiple sub. Also, I forget to mention that if you have multiple subdivision levels like this, it'll straight up tell you 
like try that, bam, this compound has multiple subdivision levels. So on and so forth. So undo, come down to here, go to geo, delete lower. Now we're stuck at this level and we can turn Sculptures Pro back on and then start doing whatever, right? Remember, the more million polygons you get into, the slower this guy is gonna go. So that's just, you know, part of the situation you're in, um, unfortunately. So, I mean, that's Sculptress Pro. It's super neat. You can do a bunch of really cool stuff with it. It really kind of frees you up, especially when you can make stuff like this, you know? But again, you can see the limits of Sculptress Pro right here. Like it just, it was making polygons, but it just couldn't make that many, right? So it really just kind of makes sculpting a little bit more fun. You can kind of get real creative with this stuff, like in a second. It's like, it's, I mean, that looks pretty cool. But regardless, that's it. Of course, in the end of the process, you're going to have to UV this guy, unwrap this guy, retopologize this guy, the whole nine yards. But if you've got a good enough computer and you've got time, you can just jump in to ZBrush keeping the limitations in mind and just start sculpting away. So it's actually a really, really good alternative to how clunky, you know, starting from Z spheres or anything like that. You can just, you can wholesale grab pieces of this guy and make new giant things. You just grab that and like move it out, right? And then you can even shrink this down and then smooth over the top and it will create polygons and like fix all that stuff. You know, so there just weren't enough polygons right there to work with, but you can do it that way. And if you don't like this stuff, you can actually just erode it all the way back down. <laughs> you know, kind of neat. But in a nutshell, that's Sculptress Pro. Pretty, pretty cool. It's one of the better additions to ZBrush in a while. I really, really like it. It's super fun and cool. Um, it's really, really good, like just hopping in and screwing around kind of thing. But you know, get out there, have fun. I hope this tutorial helped you out a little bit. And remember bracket, not bracket, backdash, turns it on and off. Because the second you have it on and you turn this thing, you can't get back to it. It's gone forever. Like, seriously, what the hell, man? Anyway, that's Sculptress Pro um, and only available in ZBrush 2018. Have fun, guys.